One of the most frustrating things for me as a developer and as a presenter is when I need to get my iOS device on to my screen and mirror it. Now, I sometimes just want to see the app that I'm developing in real time, or if I'm presenting, I want to show the thing that I'm developing. I just want to hold up my phone. So today I'm going to break down four different ways for you to screen mirror your iOS device to your Windows machine so you have it whenever you are ready and all the way from free options to paid options and even some hardware that will never fail on you. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I've been a long time iOS and Android and Windows developer, a Mac developer. And like I said, one of the most frustrating things for me is when I'm doing a presentation or when I'm developing, I just wanna see my device on the screen. Well, today I'm gonna to show you four different ways of actually breaking it all down. Some of them are software that you install on your Windows machine. Some of them are hardware that you can use with different software that's out there. Uh, and I've been using a variety of them for a long time. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, the first one is one of my favorite applications that I've used for, I don't know, a decade at this point probably, which is Visor. Visor is one of my favorite applications originally developed to screen mirror Android devices, but it now also does iOS devices too. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how this works. So one thing to know about Visor is that there's two parts to it. Uh, one is the desktop application that you need. Uh, and if you're on iOS, there is an iOS Visor app that you download. On Android, it'll automatically be sideloaded. So this is nice if you are a developer, and especially using these devices, you can just plug in your device and go. Uh, this one works over USB, so you do need to plug your device into your Windows machine. And there are two different SKUs, both normal and pro. I have the pro, which is nice. It has all sorts of options in here. And the fee is pretty low. So down here, anywhere between 250 for a month $10 for a year, or like me, I have the lifetime uh, available to me. So the first thing that you wanna do is download the software. Boom, you're good to go. And I'm gonna bring it up here. So Visor gives you a lot of different options. And you can see here that there's all sorts of different things um, outlined for iOS devices. Uh, and then of course, some different drivers that you may need to install, like the Apple mobile device support in there. Uh, so it kind of tells you everything you need. So there are some, some things there. Like I said, this one also does Android. So you would also get Android on there as well. All right, the first thing you need to do is install the Visor application. So if you go into the App Store, type for Visor, here it is right here, and you'll see you can just download it and open it up. Now, when you have Visor installed here, what you're gonna do is plug in your iOS device to your Windows machine via USB cable, and it will automatically show up inside of the Visor app on Windows. Now, this is gonna, of course, need some permissions for camera and a bunch of other things that's gonna prompt you. But basically what it'll do is use the new broadcasting functionality built into iOS to screen mirror your device over. Now you can't be uh, plugging your device in screen mirroring here, which is the fourth option that I'm gonna show you later. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it now. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is simply take my USB cable, which is down here, and I'm gonna plug it into my device. Now what we see in the Visor desktop app is that the iOS device is there and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Now here, this is gonna say, do I wanna start Visor? There's error broadcasting over here and that's because I need to actually start the broadcast on iOS. There's a big button that you might've saw earlier, which is a broadcast button. That's gonna bring up the broadcast screen. I'm gonna say start broadcast and it does a countdown. Now, once it does that, my iOS device is ready to broadcast. So here, it's gonna go ahead and walk me through everything. And there it is. There's my iOS device right here, actually doing a screen mirror of the Visor application itself. So here is that Visor application. Now it's being screen mirrored and we can see this little red dot here. And if I tap on that, I can see that it's uh, it actually is broadcasting. So this is nice because it's its own self-contained window. And of course, if I go ahead and swipe around, we can see my iOS device coming in. And it is really, really fast, so I'd give it props there uh, in general. There are some different settings that you have. So you can um, see when its uh, device is connected. You can show a preview when the screenshot is taken. Uh, you can pin the title bar, navigation bar. There's some mouse calibration on there to track desktop movements and different image quality. And you can even have an FLV output of the device as well. The other cool part is that there's actually a record screen button and a take screenshot button as well. So you can go ahead and get that in there. 
So that's Visor. Uh, it's one of my favorite options because not only is it going to do iOS, but it's also going to do Android as well. So that is one really, really cool option that you may want to take a look at. And the nice thing is that it does work over USB. So you don't have to worry about any Wi-Fi or any VPN or anything getting in your way. As long as you have a USB cable, you are good to go. All right, the next one on my list is one that works specifically over Wi-Fi. This is the original way that I did screen mirroring before some of these newer technologies came out. Specifically, if you think about how you can broadcast your iOS device or your Mac machine via AirPlay to your Apple TV, for example, you can use that same technology to broadcast and send your iOS device to your Windows machine with an application called Reflector. Now, this is an application from Air Squirrels. It's been out for a long, long time, and it's in its fourth iteration. Now, this, again, is a paid product. There is a free trial. So you can see here it's $19.99, and I've purchased it many a times. And this is an application that you download specifically onto your Windows or Mac machine. Now, what's great is it does work with basically just about anything, uh, which is really cool. But again, it works over Wi-Fi. So no cables or anything is involved there either. So let's get into it. So I have it installed and we can see it right here. Here is the Reflector Floor app. And there's a lot of options. So there's record all. There's some settings here so I can go into preferences. The nice thing here is that I can say, oh, it's going to show up as my system name. Uh, I can see the connection. So what do I want the resolution to be? So if I'm on a slower like, internet or something's going on there, I can go ahead and do that. There's some security options. So you can have a password or a one-time screen code um, um, or just an on-screen code that displays. There's some full screen options available. There's recording options available too. Uh, there's all sorts of network interface options available. And there's a bunch of other things that are crazy in here too. So you can see you can put on AirPlay, Google Cast, Miracast, all that stuff as well. So lots of nice options in here. I'm just gonna use the defaults. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna bring up my um, iOS device again. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull down from the top and I'm gonna go ahead and hit this little screen mirror button. Now, what we see on here is that there's two different devices that came up. The first one that we see on the bottom is my Apple TV called Living Room, and the second one is my desktop device. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that desktop device option there. And what this will do is try to connect to the Reflector 4 application. Now, it's unable to connect because I'm screen mirroring, so let me go ahead and unplug it and tap it one more time over there. So I'm gonna unplug this, which again is my final option that I'm gonna sneak in there, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect up automatically to my desktop device. All right, so since iOS has that restriction basically of being able to only mirror like one way at a time, now that we have that, we can see I'm connected automatically to the Reflector 4 application, and we can see it reflected right over here. I can hide it, I can show it, I can go in, I can bring it full screen, I can toggle the sizes on it, which is kind of nice uh, there too. I can also, for example, uh, tap on the settings here. And there's all sorts of different options, so it automatically detected that it's an iPhone 11, but I can change the different options. I can look at the default sizes, I can say it's always on top if it's full screen, if I want to force rotation or not on there. And again, just like we would see earlier, it's pretty smooth scrolling. I'll also note down here that there is a screenshot option and additionally a record button too. But it is pretty buttery smooth as you can see there, which is pretty nice, all right? So once you have that up and running, that's all you need. You're totally good to go. And now you have your iOS device with no wires in between reflected onto your Windows machine. All right, second to last option here, and actually the cheapest option currently available of free, that's right, absolutely 100% free, is an option that I saw David Ortnow use in several presentations and videos that he did. It's something that you may not think of, but it's actually really easy to get up and running. And that clever technique is actually using a messaging application like Teams or Zoom or Google Meet or Slack that gives you an option on the mobile device to actually share your device into a meeting. This is pretty clever. I didn't really think of it. It's maybe not the end all be all of ways of doing this, but you can easily, for example, create a free account. So here I have the just the browser view over here of Teams and I've installed Teams on my uh, device. So here it is. 
Uh, and what's great about this is that I can go in and just simply join a call. So create a call with yourself. So I'm just going to go ahead and mute myself over here. And then on my device, I'm going to go ahead and join that as well. And I'm going to say join here. Now, when you do this, you're going to join. And now we have a few options. And that option here is to share. And you'll specifically see share screen. Now, when you do this, this is going to use the same exact broadcast technology that Visor used to actually do the screen mirroring over there. Now, the difference is that uh, Visor was going local right through the USB cable to get into that feed and output through the app. Now, when you're using Teams, you're obviously going through the Internet. So there's going to be a round, you know, around that it needs to go to go up and then down over. So this is the same screen that basically wouldn't let me broadcast because uh, I'm already broadcasting uh, over here. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug that now. And we're going to go ahead and remove this from the screen. I'm just going to hit start broadcast over here. And this is going to do a countdown just like it did on Visor. And then just like that, my device is now directly inside of the Teams call. I can go ahead and bring up things like Visor again. We can see it here. I can go out and go around and see here's my Teams call that's going on here. Now, this one is a little bit slower. You can see a little bit here just because it is doing a screen mirror. So in this instance, you know, you're not going to be showing off the performance and the screen and all the other stuff like that. But you now have a window that you can drag and drop anywhere on your screen and you can get it available. So this is something if you just need it in a pinch, right? And you don't have cables, you don't have anything like that. You don't have any software installed on your machine, you don't have time to do that, you can easily hop into a Teams call to get it going. And of course, it's going to work with anything that enables you to share your screen on your device, like Zoom or Slack or, or Meet or things like that. And of course, you can just easily go to teams.microsoft.com and then boom, create your Teams account and you're all set up and you're good to go. And this works really, really great. Okay, last but not least, the way that I've actually been doing screen mirror for this entire video uh, is something that you may not think of doing with your iOS uh, device to actually get it on the screen. Uh, however, it does work really good in a pinch uh, if you don't want to go through any wireless, any USB or anything like that. Well, I guess you do need a USB, but if you don't have those cables around, uh, there is a way of capturing the output of your iOS device via HDMI. You'll need two pieces of hardware. First and foremost is the HDMI adapter for your iOS device. That's lightning. And then the other one is a capture card. So for example, the cam link like I have here from Elgato or any of the different capture devices that could be internal, external, or anything like this. And there's a bunch of these out on the internet. I'll link to these official ones because I think they work super duper good. Uh, but the gist of it is like this. The first thing that you'll want to do is take your Elgato card and plug in an HDMI cable. Boom. Then what you'll want to do is take the HDMI adapter, plug in an HDMI over there. And then what you're going to do is plug that into your device. Boop, just like that. Now, with this set up, basically you plug via USB this adapter into your device automatically. So if you're on a Windows machine, plug it in. If you're on a desktop like I am right here, plug it in and you're good to go. Now, I'm going to show you how to set this up in OBS, but you can also use the Elgato software, or other capturing devices software that comes in to just use it as a uh, as a webcam, for example, you can do that too. So what I'm going to do now is head over and we're going to go ahead and capture that really quick. Alright, so the very first thing that we're going to do is take that USB and plug it in to your machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. All right, we're good to go. Now on my iOS device, it actually told me it was installing a device driver, I guess from the actual little adapter. So that may take a few seconds there. So you're gonna let that go ahead. And then what you'll see is a little blue icon in the top left of your iOS device. Now what you're gonna do is inside of OBS, go into the new and say video capture device. And here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say cam link iOS. And then it's going to bring up a screen. So we have a bunch of cameras, a bunch of other things on here. I'm going to select my cam link 4K. Now this is going to show me what my device looks like. I'm going to hit OK. But notice here that it has this black background on it. And if I move this over, you can see that I'm behind it. So that's not super ideal. But if you wanted to, uh, what you can do is hold down the Alt uh, button here. 
and then actually trim that video down. So here I'm just gonna trim this source down just like this. There we go. Move that up and then move it over. You can then resize it. You can do anything you want. And the cool part about using OBS in this scenario is that if you want to, you can actually use this as a virtual camera. So the whole thing would be a virtual camera here. And the nice thing, of course, is that it is HDMI, so it is pretty butter smooth, which is really, really nice at the end of the day. So you get all of that built in and that capability. Uh, you can capture the audio out from it as well. So you can see here the audio. So you might want to mute that if you're doing some screen capture. But this is one of my favorite ways of just setting up scenes inside of OBS. The window is always going to be there when I plug it in and I'm totally good to go. So there you have it. Really, really easy. Probably the easiest way, the most minimal setup way uh, of doing this. But of course, you're going to have to have OBS open on a screen. So again, not the most ideal scenario here, but you could you know, set the resolution of OBS uh, to be uh, instead of 1920 by 1080, 1080 by 1920, or the resolution of iOS. And the other cool part is that you could take this and then you could say uh, preview scaling or windowed projector, and you can actually take this into a little window too. So that's something that you could do at the same time. So you can use some different powers and just have that floating around. So that's one of my favorite features. You can do that. And again, you can set it up to be a different scale there. Anyways, there you go. Using HDMI via the adapter and everything that you need. All right, and there you have it. What's your favorite way of screen mirroring your iOS device to Windows or to any of your other devices that are out there? Did I miss something? I think there's a lot of great software solutions out there today to help you get there and the cool part is many of these solutions also work for Android too. I think Android's a little bit easier because you've been able to do it forever, but for iOS, the options have come a long way. Let me know in the comments below if one of these four are the option that you're gonna use or already using, or if you're using something else. And of course, if you made it this far in the video, don't forget to like, because that goes into the YouTube algorithm of goodness to recommend it to other folks. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet on this channel. Put all sorts of development tips and tricks, tech reviews, and all sorts of other things right here on the channel. I really appreciate your time, and I hope that you enjoy this video. So until next time, thanks for watching.